Yeah, just jive a little bit there. Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I am your host, the Duckman. <laughs> <laughs> and this is... Amy McQueen. That's right, and she's back to help me today to adjust my rear torsion bars on the Volkswagen Fastback right here behind me. Now, what we're doing is we're going to be actually raising the suspension, but the principles are the same, whether you have a Beetle, a Carmen Ghia, a Thing, a Bus, Type 3, whether it be a Fastback, Notchback, Squareback, if you have a Volkswagen... Uh, well, I'm going to call it Volkswagen 924 because that's actually what it is. A uh, Porsche 924, a 944, or even a 911 or a 356. They all have rear torsion bars that you can pull the spring plate off, re-index it, put it back on, and you can either raise or lower your vehicle's rear end just by simply doing that. And that's the process we're going to do on here. After we tore Ruby apart and upgraded the rear end to an IRS rear suspension, I put it all back together and it just drove something terrible. Looked really cool though, down nice and low, but it just drove horribly. It was rough, it was bouncy, and it's not the kind of ride that I'm used to in this vehicle. Kind of like my ex-boyfriend. But well, what we're doing in this one today is we're trying to raise her up roughly about two and a half inches, just based on my calculations to where she needs to be. Now the principles that we're showing in this video and what it takes to adjustment, it's exactly the same if you were to do it on any one of the cars mentioned. If you want to lower it, however, the spring plate will be adjusted in the opposite direction instead and get your vehicle lowered to the approximate increment that you're looking for. Now, if you'd like to see a table of all these different increments and how to adjust them on your vehicle, you can hit up duckshit.net and you'll find a table with a link that'll show you all the little precise adjustments and how much it affects your ride height if you'd like to make the adjustments yourself on your vehicle, specifically for type one based torsion bar suspensions. Buses are a little bit different because they have a different number of splines, but again, principle is still the same. As always, licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, that way you get updates every time I upload a video. Don't forget to check out duckshit.net for all of my different social media links, including Bees. Bee has a Patreon, a YouTube, an Instagram. I also have multiple YouTubes, Patreon, Instagram. We have PayPal donation links if you'd like to support her or my projects. I would certainly like to help and I would appreciate the support because it gets a little expensive on some of this stuff sometimes. So thanks a lot, you guys, for watching. Really appreciate it. We'll be back right after the intro. Oh, God. <laughs> you get it. All right, well, the first thing we gotta do is jack up the rear end. I don't worry too much about getting this thing level because as far as I'm concerned, if it's high or low in the back, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. The idea is you want consistency. You want the same measurement on both sides. Now, this is assuming that your vehicle is already balanced, that it's not high on one side or that somebody hasn't tampered with it and done something unusual. If the both sides of the vehicle are the same height, and you'd like to adjust them, either raise them or lower them, you would just turn the torsion bar equal amounts on either side. And that's where we're going to begin. Make sure you've got a chalk under the front wheel and jack up the rear end, shoving a jack stand up underneath the torsion bar in the rear. Don't put the jack stand or the jack anywhere else except there. Otherwise, you might find yourself denting up the floors or mangling up your engine's frame horns. All right, go ahead and take your wheel out. There it is. And the whole wheel should come right out of there. Fantastic. Now, on the IRS rear ends, which is what we have here on Ruby, despite her being a 68, you remember we upgraded this rear end to IRS. There's three bolts that are right here. These three need to come out. You need to separate the spring plate from the trailing arm. At this point, I don't think that we're going to have to do too much else with the... Um, rear suspension components here because of what I need to do. We're going to do the best we can to not have to tear anything else apart. But there's a possibility we might have to remove the double jointed rear axle. Um, that could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I've done this before, leaving that in place. So we're going to attempt to do that. That'll save me from having to remove six bolts. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and attack these next. If you've got a Type 3 or a Carmen Ghia, there's a little cap over here that has to come off for the torsion. I believe the um, 924s and 944s have that also. If you have a Beetle and you have a long torsion bar like this, you're probably going to find yourself removing the lower three or four bolts from the fender and just moving it out of the way carefully so as not to scratch your paint. You can stuff a big towel up underneath and just keep it out of the way. There's no reason to remove the whole fender. But these guys, there's a little 8mm 
nut that's behind here. It looks like it's already loose. <laughs> Didn't realize I had loosened it before. But I'm going to need both hands because you need one hand to press on this and one hand to loosen the nut. But we'll remove that cap. Here it is. That's what it looks like when it comes out. If you haven't removed one of these in a long time, or if you've never removed one, go ahead and spray a little bit of penetrating lube on there before you try. Because if you break this little tiny bolt off, you'll have to re-weld it on. And if you do, you mess your paint up on the other side. Ask me how I know. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> We're going to reassemble this little sucker and put it away someplace safe because it does have paint on it. We don't want to scratch it up. These four bolts on the spring plate cover have to come off. One up under here as well. They're usually 14 or 15 millimeter. In my case, these are 15s. I have found before that sometimes these um, could be any size if some idiot removed it and decided to uh, push some other bolts in that were American threaded or something. It's just, yeah, we had a real mess on my bus. Uh, in this case, these are actually the original bolts from it and everything does fit normally. So we're just gonna loosen them up and pop that cap right off. And if we get lucky, it should clear the end over here and come out from between the fender. With all four of them bolts out, this cover should come right off. It's so nice having everything clean since I repainted and took the rear end apart here. Let's see, is it gonna come out? Yeah, it did come out. Excellent. I don't know if the rubber gogi's gonna come out. If there's enough clearance and we can pull it, we're gonna. Looks like it's also a yes, barely. There it is. All right, it's out of the way. I forgot to mention while I was pulling this all apart, uh, I removed the lower shock bolt. As I started to push this down uh, off camera, <laughs> uh, the shock bolt was hanging it up. But once I removed the last three bolts and I had this thing where I wanted it to be, I just simply tapped down on it until it popped right off. Simple as that. Everything is out of the way. I did not have to remove the rear axle. Uh, that saved me a ton of work of having to remove a whole bunch of different bolts. Which CV joint bolts? They're a greasy, sloppy mess once you get inside the CV cup, and I hate taking those damn things apart, so I leave them as long, uh, just leave them alone as long as I can. In this case, they're going to stay right where they are. Okay, this torsion bar, at this point, has no load on it because of the way I installed it. I didn't put any preload on it whatsoever, so I should be able to just uh, grab it and, well, frankly, just pull it right out. Looks like it's a little bit stuck, but uh, I'll get up underneath it and pull it out. Now there is a specialized tool for this, and I call it a chicken foot. Why do I call it a chicken foot? Well, because bok bok! Locally in our club, a lot of people are starting to call it a chicken foot, but what it actually is, it attaches to the top of your shock tower, somewhere up under there, and then you, I should have set this up before I started running the camera. You wanna loosen this up, so that way the lower hook can get caught underneath the spring plate. Looks like this isn't gonna work too good on the Type 3. I've never used it on here before. But I'm gonna have to uh, fiddle with it a little bit. But this slot that you see right here on the bottom needs to go over that spring plate and allows me to tighten this up, which then compresses the spring plate. And then I can either take it off or push it into position. Now remember, right now there's no preload on this spring plate. Some of these people will tell you to be extra careful with it because the thing will come unloaded with many hundreds of pounds of force. And if your hand is underneath it in such a way, I mean, it will be like a pair of scissors to your fingers and it'll just, it'll just snip them right off. But if you're careful and you don't put yourself in harm's way, there's a lot of different things that you can do here, including not use this tool. You can actually put a jack up underneath it and use the weight of the vehicle to uh, move the spring plate. But in our case right now, what we're gonna do is, uh, I think we're not gonna use it because it's, it doesn't fit too good on a Type 3. It doesn't fit on here well at all. That's terrible. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't quite reach. <laughs> I'd uh, need to modify the top part to make sure it attached to the top shock tower properly. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, just get up underneath that spring plate and um, with no preload on it right now, just pull it out of position. And we want to move it one spline on the inner torsion bar, so that way this spring plate will be down lower, essentially raising the car up. All right, let's go ahead and make some adjustments and uh, see what we got. First, I'm going to put an angle meter on it, and we're going to calculate approximately how much angle changed, and we're going to convert that to inches of ride height raise. In case if you're lowering your Beetle or your Type 3 or your whatever you got, you just uh, simply move the torsion bar the opposite direction, or the spring plate in your case, and uh, bring it this way. 
All right, let's go ahead and see what we got. Okay, it feels to me, and this is based on experience, it feels to me like the inner torsion bar is about to release. So I'm going to, uh, yep, that was exactly right. The inner torsion bar just released. The outer is still attached to the spring plate. Now I let that fall down and swing out of the way. That's kind of a mistake because you want to count the number of splines and you can do this by just engaging it slightly and turning it and you'll feel it just kind of click and engage into the next one and then you can push it in. In my case, I'm using this line here as a baseline. And if I bring this back up and lock it back in, that's where we were when we started out. Just like that. All right, let me put a gauge on that, find out exactly what our angle is, and then we're gonna figure out how much we're gonna modify it. All right, here's my angle gauge. Put it right up here on the spring plate. Now on a stock Type 3 square back, you would generally want this at around, right around 21 and a half degrees, and I'm actually pulling that out of the instruction manual. Um, on a square, on a, on a fast back, you're looking at 22 and a half degrees. In this case, we actually put the square back torsion bar in here, which just happens to be the same size as the 944 part that I put in here. So we need to set the specs to the same as that of a square back. Now right now what we're looking at is, uh, well bang on, it's at zero degrees. I've already checked the car and the car is at six and a half. So we're already getting started at six and a half degrees. So the idea is we need to move about another 14 degrees to get this to where it needs to be. So, I think that if we drop that sucker down to where it's going to go, that should get us to the stock height. We're not going to be stock in this case, we are going to be slightly lowered. The old torsion bars that were in here were sagging a little bit, and I took advantage of that as being lowered. <laughs> and I just kind of went with it and I liked the way it looked. So we're not going to go up exactly to that, we're going to move at that one spline, and then we're going to recheck it and see where we're at. Okay, the math works out. We just uh, gained 10 degree angle. And that roughly, uh, I think it's actually 9 degrees and 50 minutes, so we're, sh you know, 10 minutes short of uh, that of a, a degree. But we're going to call it 10. We'll just call it nice and round it up even. Plus the 6.5 that we got up front, um, which bounces out 16.5. We're actually 5 degrees lower than what the stock torsion bar setting would have been. What that equates to is roughly about an inch and a third drop over stock. So it is going to be lowered slightly, but that's, that's exactly what I wanted it to be. If we need to come off of that a little bit, um, well, we can take it apart and make some adjustments again. I, I've become pretty good at this over the years, so it's not that big of a deal to me to pull this all apart, especially now that it's nice and clean. I mean, geez, my hands barely even got dirty today. Look at that. And it only takes a few minutes on either side. All right, well, uh, we're going to um, go ahead and push the spring plate back up into position to where it's supposed to go. We're going to record that setting of 10 degrees, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, let's go ahead and start reassembling. And this is where things can get a little tricky because this spring plate now has a lot of preload on it. And uh, the preload is all that force that's required to get this spring plate back up onto the lower bump stop. And the easy way to do it in this case is actually just to put a jack and a block of wood up underneath here, push it up into position, and then using a mallet and a block of wood through the body hole, start pounding the spring plate into place. Really, it's easy. There's not too much to it. We're going to go ahead and demonstrate. Let's see if I can get this camera set up on a tripod so you guys can actually watch this one. Because this is the only thing out of everything that I've done today that's actually a little bit tricky. <laughs> Alright, well here we go. We've got a block of wood here. Looks like it's exactly the right height. I just kind of cut off a piece of 4x4 four four and guessed. <laughs> I got really lucky. Okay. Get the jack into position here. It doesn't take too awfully much. Of course, we're not setting the preload as tight as we would as if it were on a stock vehicle. All right, we're in place. Now we need to get up around the other side here. We gotta pound that sucker in with a hammer and another block of wood. Because this is going through a body hole here, I don't think I have a block that fits in there. We're gonna have to dig around for that. We'll be right back. All right, I made something. Looks like it's a pretty good fit, and it's kind of snug too, which is nice, because I can actually <laughs> let it sit there. All right, well, here we go. We're gonna knock that spring plate back into place. 
it'll go in little by little and that's exactly what it's doing. Um, sometimes it's even good to hit it right about here. Sometimes you can hit it from the top. Sometimes you can hit it from the bottom. But it's going to take a little work to get it shimmied into place, especially now because it's under load. Torsion bar splines are actually, you can't really see because the exposure is turned up, but they're engaged like this. And there's a lot of force being pressed on them right now, so they're tight as opposed to when the thing is just loose and sloppy when there's no weight on it at all. So it's going to take a little bit of a beating to get it in, and uh, once we've got it in there, then we should be... Yeah, it's going in. Then we should be good to go. Anyway, we're going to continue to beat away at this thing, and we'll be back in just a minute. Now if you're lowering the rear of your Volkswagen as opposed to raising it, that extra step of beating it in as I did is, is much less necessary because the preload on the thing will be next to nothing. In the case of what I did here when I assembled this, I just went ahead and put the spring plates on the bump stops and wherever it popped into it, where it went. Then I just adjusted the other side so it matched exactly the same way sitting on there. Well, we've got it sitting on the bump stop now on the bottom, just about anyway. Yep, there it is. Okay, now at that point we're ready to put that cover back on and that cover will pull everything back together and uh, that spring plate is effectively finished. All right, one rubber gogi goes on this way. It's already been greased from the last time I worked on this. Yeah, everything is still nice and wet and clean, all from a couple weeks ago when I had this all apart. Alright, there it is. Now sometimes it can be a little tricky to get these bolts in here. And that's because the rubber gogies sometimes require um, a little extra force to compress them into place. So the way to solve that or resolve that is by running in the bolts. And if they don't go in for some reason, in my case they've actually been long enough and everything has worked out really nicely, but if they don't, get some longer bolts and wind those in. And once you've got the spring plate cover in place where it's supposed to be, everybody recommends that you pull them back out and use the shorter bolts and where they're supposed to be because when the bolts stick through the back side of the uh, torsion bar, the ends of them can rust out pretty, pretty badly and that might make it really difficult to come apart. Otherwise, if you don't really care, and I'm sure a lot of people don't, just go ahead and uh, just tighten them in with the longer bolts and leave it alone. <laughs> Put these into place here. As they say in German, das ist gut und tight. <laughs> Now we've got to get the trailing arm back onto the spring plate, and you probably notice, hey, they're on opposite sides. How the hell did that happen, and how are we going to solve that? Well, this actually will spring down a little bit. i got to push down on it a little bit to flex it out of the way. And then gently, with pry bar, I should be able to get up and under here and put them back the way they belong. And then in one motion, this should go back up into place. Helps if the shock absorber is in the right position. It's like the spring plate and the trailing arm were just locked together in a precarious position. Get our brake line pinched in here. There it goes. Boom. And we're back in. Ha <laughs> ha! All right. We're ready to put our bolts back into the trailing arm. There's three of them over here. Let me show you what we're looking at. I like to put the long bolt here on the bottom that's where the spring plate is usually furthest away from the trailing arm so that way when you bolt this tight everything gets drawn together and same with this here this is a short bolt I think and this is a long one yeah I like to put the long ones in the back short one in the front All right. 
Put our nuts on from the back. Looks like it's gonna need a little touch-up paint on here too. I bashed the crap out of my paint. Didn't go through the primer though, at least most cases it didn't. Scuffed it up a little bit though. That brown stuff is that rust preventative primer that I had put on there. What we need to do next, get this brake line formed out of the way here so it doesn't get caught in the bump stop. Yeah, there's a rubber bump stop missing from here. I forgot to weld on the new uh, little rubber, um, it kind of looks like a mushroom dickhead. <laughs> I forgot to weld a new one on, it actually rusted off or got crushed off or broke off. Or however these arms were treated in the past before I owned them. But uh, I'm going to actually just machine a little one and just drill a hole and bolt it right through and run the bolt right through there. So that's something I need to do, it's just something I'm not doing yet. One of those minimal issues things because I don't drive this thing so stupid that I bottom it out. Anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and head over to the other side. We're going to set the other one to what? 16 degrees. That's right, 16 and a half degrees actually, but that's minus the 6 and a half degrees that the body is currently at. So we're going to set it at 10, which means we're going to move roughly one on the inner spine. But this is where the magic takes place because if I move it one spline and it still does not match this side, and then I'm going to have to do a little bit of magic and move it some inners, move it some outers, move it some inners, move it some outers, until the math works out that I get it to approximately 10 degrees is what we're looking for. The closer I can get it to that, the better off we're going to be. All right, well, this sucker's ready to go on this side. Let's go ahead and finish bolting it together. Let's not forget about putting that shock back in. The bottom bolt on that shock needs to go in before the wheel gets reattached. There it is. We'll take care of that right now. Well, oh man, look at that. I think that's exactly the way that I wanted it to be. If I'm not mistaken, that line that's on that tire there, you can kind of see it over there just a little bit. The fender would just about come up in line with that. Now, in order to get this thing settled, I stood on the uh, door sill, grabbed the roof rack, and I bounced up and down until the thing settled uh, right to the way you see it. I don't think it's gonna come down any more than that when I start driving it. If it does, it'll be very, very minor. But I think that's right about how I had it, um, well, before we started all the work. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. But well, we're going to go take it for a ride and uh, see exactly how it turned out. Well, we successfully got Ruby's rear end adjusted. We got the back end raised up approximately two and a half inches, 2.38 I think is what the actual calculation turned out to. If you're interested in seeing the adjustment tables and how much each one of those splines adjust to and how much it'll affect the wheel and the adjustment of your ride height, please check out duckshit.net so that way you too can see the table up there on my website. That's right, it's in print, you guys. It makes it a whole lot easier for you to do this type of job if you're interested in doing it yourself. Well. I've taken it for a ride, and the ride is just so much better than it was. So much better. The ride height looks pretty good. It's lowered just a little bit. I think we're about an inch and a half lower than stock, which put it in a nice, comfortable position, yet still makes it aesthetically pleasing, where it looks nice. It just looks nice. What do you think? It look good? I think it looks great. It looks great? I think you look great. There she is. <laughs> well, I think that's going to be it for today, you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Licky, likey, comment, subscribe. Pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time that I upload a new video. Please check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. You'll also find B's Instagram, B's Patreon, B's active new YouTube page, which I think has two videos on it as of time of recording, probably more by the time you guys watch this. And she's got, I think she said, four on her Patreon for special Patreon folks. So hit her up over there. As always, check me out also up on duckshit.net. I've got multiple YouTubes. I've got a Patreon rum and cola donation fund. That's right, I like to tip the bottle once in a while. Sometimes even while I'm using heavy machinery. Don't do that. Don't ever copy the duck man. He's stupid. Anyways, we'll be back next video. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> after we adjusted the, uh, after we upgraded the, after we, uh, <laughs> after we upgraded the rear end of the, uh, um, damn it. <laughs> after we, <laughs> after the goat f me in the ass. Um, <laughs> as always, 
Licky likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly for updates if you'd like to my again. If you ask nicely. <laughs> <laughs> now you're not gonna have a duck shit on your head. That's all it's good. All right, thanks you guys for watching. Really do appreciate it. As always, um, finger f that like button. <laughs> Monetization. <laughs> Don't forget to flick that bean so that way you get updates every uh -oh. time that I upload a new video. <laughs> you know, I was going to try something different. I think we're just going to say, f it. that's fine. That blows my mind. Outtake. Yeah, that was, yeah, okay. Whee! All right, well, we are successful in adjusting that rear end of the... Try that again. All right, well, we... 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 We do not. We do not... <laughs> today. What? What? Okay. Who? Uh. <laughs> All right. Adjusting your rear end. It's fine. I don't have big hands. You have to... <laughs>